chapter one, section one. Why is the failure to renounce hierarchy the Achilles heel of right-wing libertarianism? Any capitalist system will produce vast differences in economic and social wealth and power. So we argue in section 3.1. Such differences will reflect themselves in the market and any free contracts agreed there will create hierarchical relationships. Thus, capitalism is marked by hierarchy. See section B1.2. And unsurprisingly, right libertarians and so-called anarcho-capitalists fail to oppose such free market generated hierarchy. Both groups approve of it in the capitalist workplace or rented accommodation, and the right libertarians also approve of it in a minimal state to protect private property. So-called anarcho-capitalists, in contrast, approve of the use of private defense firms to protect property. But the failure of these two movements to renounce hierarchy is their weakest point, for anti-authoritarianism has sunk deep roots into the modern psyche as a legacy of the 60s. Many people who do not even know what anarchism is have been profoundly affected by the personal liberation and counterculture movements of the past 30 years, epitomized by the popular bumper sticker, Question Authority. As a result, society now tolerates much more choice than ever before in matters of religion, sexuality, art, music, clothing, and other components of lifestyle. We need only recall the conservatism that reigned in such areas during the 50s and during contemporary times, Texas, to see that the idea of liberty has made tremendous advances in just a few decades. Although this liberatory impulse has so far been confined almost entirely to the personal and cultural realms, it may yet be capable of spilling over and affecting economic and political institutions, provided it continues to grow. The right is well aware of this, as seen in its ongoing campaigns for family values, school prayer, suppression of women's rights, again looking at you Texas, fundamentalist Christianity, sexual abstinence before marriage, and other attempts to revive the Aussie and Harriet mindset of the good old days. This is where the efforts of cultural anarchists, artists, musicians, poets, and others are important in keeping alive the idea of personal freedom and resistance to authority as a necessary foundation for economic and political restructuring. Indeed, the libertarian right as a whole support restrictions on freedom as long as it's not the state that's doing it. Their support for capitalism means that they have no problem with bosses dictating what workers do during worker hours, nor outside working hours if the job requires employees take drug tests or not be gay or trans in order to keep it. If a private landlord or company decrees a mandatory rule or mode of living, workers and tenants must love it or leave it. Of course, that the same argument also applies to state laws is one hotly denied by these same right-wingers, a definite case of not seeing the wood for the trees. Of course, the so-called anarcho-capitalists will argue workers and tenants can find a more liberal boss or landlord. This, however, ignores two key facts. Firstly, being able to move to a more liberal state hardly makes state laws less offensive, as they themselves will be the first to point out. Secondly, looking for a new job or home is not easy. Just moving to a new state can involve drastic upheavals, so, change, uh, so changing jobs and homes means even more change. Moreover, the job market is usually a buyer's market, except maybe right now. It has to be in capitalism. Otherwise, profits are squeezed. And this means that workers are not usually in a position, unless they organize, to demand increased liberties at work. It seems somewhat ironic to say that, the at, the least, uh, at the least, that right-wingers, right-libertarians, and so-called anarcho-capitalists place rights of property over the rights of self-ownership. Even though, according to their ideology, self-ownership is the foundational right from which property rights are derived. Thus, in these ideologies, the rights of property owners to discriminate and govern the propertyless are more important than the freedom from discrimination, 
i.e. to be yourself, or the freedom to govern oneself at all times. So, when it boils down to it, they're not really bothered about restrictions on liberty. And indeed, they will defend private restrictions on liberty with all their might. This may seem a strange position for self-proclaimed libertarians and so-called anarcho-capitalists to take, but it flows naturally from their definition of freedom. But by not attacking hierarchy beyond certain forms of statism, they fundamentally undermine the claims that they then make. Freedom cannot be compartmentalized. It's holistic. The denial of liberty in, say, the workplace quickly results in it being denied elsewhere in society due to the impact of the inequalities it produces, just as the degrading effects of wage labor and the hierarchies with, uh, with which it are bound up are felt by the worker outside of work. Neither the Libertarian Party nor so-called anarcho-capitalists are genuinely anti-authoritarian, as those who truly dedicated to liberty must be. 